think the women's game is going to just grow and grow exponentially. There's been a perception over recent years that the ECB have parked county cricket. The big issue forever is going to be the calendar and the schedule. Yeah. And we need to put more marketing effort into the blast. Those heroes were such a massive part of my of, of my life. So we've got £30 million pounds of debt now that mm. we've got to well, pay that, down. That... Finding someone who has got winning at the top mm. of their list of priorities is important. One of the things that I found frustrating is that ECB have, to some extent, put the shackles on how much you can invest in women's cricket. I was shocked when I came into this world that there were no formal representatives of county cricket on the board of the ECB. We get approached by you know people from the IPL on a regular basis. It's really important, I think, for the city, for the members, for all of us, that we have the best test matches being played here. Hello and welcome to Emirates Old Trafford for another edition of Beyond the Boundary. I'm delighted to say uh, I've got with me today the chair of Lancashire Cricket, Andy Anson. Andy, it's great to see you. It's great for you to, to come in here. I know you're very busy in your role as CEO of uh, British Olympics. But you're also very busy in your role as chair of Lancashire. Yeah. You've been doing it for nearly three years now. Yeah. How's the role changed in that time? Um, well, I think a couple of things. One, I've learned a lot in three years. I mean, it's a, a strange and intense environment at times and with lots of different stakeholders. So I think I've learned how to you know, do the role as you go on, obviously. Uh, but also, I'd say, you know, we have a serious relationship with the ECB. And over the three years, I think we've had three different chairs of the ECB. We've obviously had the issue over at Yorkshire, the ICEC report, uh, and some pretty meaty issues. And at the same time, we're trying to make sure that, you know, the county cricket is being properly looked after, marketed and, and, and nurtured for the future. Now, when I first met you, I was director of cricket here. Yeah. Um, I got the feeling that you thought this was going to be a relatively easy ride, one day a month, and, and I'll, be, I'll be there having a nice time, watching yeah. a bit of Lancashire yeah, cricket yeah. and enjoying the odd test match. Yeah. It's not quite like that. No, it's not, and it goes through waves, actually. It goes through waves. The, the Lancashire bit, actually, is more consistent and stable, and there, and there is, you know, the board meetings are quite regular. Yeah. We've got a brilliant management team at Lancashire. You know, you've seen things like the delivery of the new hotel wing and the new stand. That's happened in a really efficient way and effective way. So we've we've got a good team in place. So I don't have to overly worry about the, you know the day to day operations of Lancashire. What I do have to worry about is the more strategic issues, and quite often that means interfacing with ECB. And actually, that goes in in waves. They, they, I'm on various committees and subcommittees, and the first thing I was on was the Media Rights Committee, which was doing the New Deal with Sky. Mm -hmm. And there was a period when that was incredibly time consuming. And um, and now I've just been announced yesterday that I'm going on the rep board of the county. Game, which means I'm, I'm a part of a small group who are looking after the interests of county cricket and ultimately reporting to EC board, ECB board. So those things take time and, and take your time, but they're really important that you know that Lancashire, as one of the biggest, probably one of the two or three biggest counties, mm. um, has its voice heard properly at, at all those meetings. Well, that'll interest an awful lot of our, our viewers and our members that, that Lancashire's interests are, and the count, county interests in general are being portrayed uh, well to the ECB because there's been a perception over recent years that the ECB have parked county cricket. Yeah. They've, they've, they've let it just drift a little. Yeah, I think, I mean, I was shocked when I came into this world that there were no formal representatives of county cricket on the board of the ECB. You know, I've been in numerous sporting environments where the stakeholders, you know, of which we are um, amongst the most important, are properly represented on the board. And there, were no, there was no county representation. I think that was because in the past there'd been such heavy politicking amongst county chairs to sort of try and control the ECB. The, the governance review got rid of all the county chairs, but that meant there was no real up-to-date voice for county cricket in the ECB boardroom. There were two people who were there representing the interests of professional cricket, but they weren't in touch with the day-to-day -day of county cricket, and there was a real hole. So we, there was a group of us who got together early doors from the big counties who fought to change the governance model so that county cricket was properly represented. And now, I think, things are moving. And the good news, I think, for all of us is that with Richard Thompson and Richard Gould as the chair and CEO of, of the ECB, they were long-term Surrey people. And, who and were at loggerheads to a degree. Yeah, who the fought with ECB and knew the yeah. good and the bad of the ECB. Maybe they were not loggerheads, but they butted, butted heads. They did. And, they, you know, Frank Richard was the only person who voted against the 100, for mm. example, Richard Thompson. The, 
But with them in there now, they clearly understand the requirements of the counties and they are definitely going out of their way to make sure our voices not just heard, but actually they're taking really serious and sensible actions to make sure county cricket is properly represented and actually that the game is properly looked after and, and has a chance to grow and thrive. Well, that's immensely sensible and it's good to hear from a from an avid personal Lancashire view. Yeah. Um, but it, as I say, it's sensible because if you ignore county cricket, you ostensibly are ignoring the future of English cricket yeah, because right. that is where all the, the, the future talent comes from. Yeah. And I assume that that has been one of your, you've been a champion of local talent, yeah. but I assume that the county chairs are the same. Yeah, I think everyone sees, you know, especially with the red ball game and the future of test cricket, that the talent pathway for developing great red ball cricketers is absolutely vital. And the only people who are going to deliver that are the counties. There's no doubt about that. And we've, you know, you, when you were director of cricket, you made it a massive part of your focus. And on the back of that, we've got great young talent coming through, you know, in, into the team on a regular basis. I think everyone sees the, the importance of that, and I do think that's being protected. We've still got a lot of issues. I mean, the big issue forever is going to be the calendar and the schedule yeah. and how you fit four tournaments into one summer. And, and that's just going to be a never-ending problem as far as I can see. Well, yeah, because you can't, <laughs> you can't extend the calendar, can you? That, that's quite clear. Um, is there a view, I mean, from a personal point of view, I think T20, T20 Blast is essential to English cricket. Yeah. Essential to the counties because yeah. it brings in yeah. support, it welcomes new audiences. Yeah. But so too does the 100. And there's your conundrum. Yes. Yeah, is there room for both of those tournaments? And I, I think there has to be now. I, I don't think the 100 decision is going to get reversed. Maybe the format will change in the future. Um, you know, I think the format was an unnecessary sort of creation. I think it was there to create a difference between the Blast and the 100. But I think the 100 has its window because the ECB rightly is trying to make sure that you know the England and Wales has a franchise type tournament that competes with the best in the world and mm. you know the ambition isn't to be bigger than the IPL I think that that's a race you're not going to win in the certainly in the near future but it's to be the second best franchise tournament in the world and make the hundred that but that the, the blast is still vital for the counties and we've got to build it market it get it right I mean and there's a continual discussion about you know, do you have the the, semi, the quarterfinals and the, and the finals day after the hundred or before the hundred? And next year, it's clearly going after the hundred, mm. and we'll see how that works. But then you 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 know you stop the narrative of the tournament. You, you're going to struggle with your overseas players what? staying around and being back in place for the for the latter stages. So, but equally, when we had the quarterfinals, you know, as we had in the last couple of years here, um, straight after you've qualified you get no chance to sell a ticket. So your chance of actually selling out a quarter final, which should be one of your biggest days of cricket in the calendar, you've got a window of three or four days to sell all those tickets and it's impossible. So there's pros and cons, but the, the, what is very clear is we need to put more marketing effort into the blast because mm. it's worked on the 100. Mm. I mean, I was... Well, I it will have, do, won't it? it? it if, you worked, pile, yeah. if you pile in the marketing yeah, yeah. and advertising into yeah. a tournament, then it, it's going to succeed. Yeah. And, and I think the counties feel short-changed yeah, at the, the, T, the T20 Blast. Yeah, they been... should do. And they should do, I think. But I was definitely a naysayer about the 100, right? I'm not going to pretend I was a huge supporter. It's interesting that. Sorry, I'm interrupting you. But, yeah. but from a broadcasting rights viewpoint, which you are, yeah. you've got a history yeah. back to your Channel 4 days, yeah. and now yeah. you've, you've just said that you're, you're part and parcel of, the, of that looking forward. Those broadcasting rights are linked very closely to the hundred, yeah. aren't they? But yeah, if I, if I go back and before I, I was, I'd say that they could have done a much better job of creating value in the broadcasting rights of the Blast, and I don't think that was done. I think from its early inception, the Blast was a great product, and there was genuine interest in it. Mm. And then there was a period when it was allowed to to wane, and the marketing stopped. Actually, the, the you know Sky's interest in it seemed to move away, and it lost its way a bit. So you could have argued that if you put all that money into marketing the Blast, you could have had a much bigger tournament with more value. And I, I still think one of the things I've been pushing along with my you know, colleagues from Surrey and, and Warwickshire, who tend to be our closest allies, um, is to make sure there's more Blast games on television than, mm -hmm. than there ever have been and that we're giving it a real chance to build an audience. So 
it's definitely on the agenda. There's definitely a plan being built to put more marketing uh, muscle behind the blast to build it back up again. But the, the crowds are good. I mean, on the big mm. games here, you know, what we would like to see is be playing different teams and not always be playing the same teams and make sure we, we get a chance to play some of the bigger teams during the season. That, I think that's important. Is there an appetite for a Premier League in the T20? <laughs> no. No, is the you're answer. saying no. I say no because, but that's a generalised. Yeah, you say a, yes, it, there is, but well, no, there isn't. The one of the things that you learn very quickly: <laughs> cricket is a very bizarrely structured game because you've got big counties like ourselves and Surrey, and then you've got the much smaller ones, the Worcesters of the world and the Northampton, Leicestershire of the world, and you're all in the room together with one vote. Mm. It's a bit like FIFA when I did the World Cup, but you've got 208 countries voting on the uh, the World Cup that they're you know that they're never going to have. I mean. We've got, we do have an issue, but because of that, you know, the only way a Premier League of cricket would be formed is if eight teams or ten teams decided to break away. And I think mm. at the moment, there's other things happening that, that make that not very likely. We've just got to make it as good a tournament as it can be. And then the blast is the, the lifeblood financially, economically of counter cricket. But it's also the thing that brings in the most, you know, the, big, the biggest fan numbers. Mm. What I would say, I was going to say when I, you know, I, I was a naysayer about the 100. But I did come down to a couple of games this summer and it was a very different crowd. And it was noticeably different in terms of the families and the kids who mm. were here. And it reminded me, I, my first game here was 1971. I was just reflecting on it this week because I was at Bobby Charlton's funeral on Monday, mm. which was an amazing honour. But it was a bigger honour that I got to know him, you know, as a director of Man United. And then during the World Cup, we travelled a lot. And he was a huge hero of mine. And then the following year, in 1971, I came here and my dad t told me in advance about Clive Lloyd and Fruke Engineer. And I came here and, and saw those, you know, those two play at their absolute prime. And I came for years after that and saw them hit amazing you know, innings. And that, you know, I can reel off that team. But those heroes were such a massive part of my, of, of my life and, and existence. So we opened the hotel, Fruke and Clive were there. And it's just been a massive honour to get to know those people. But what I was going to say is the, the audience back in those days was families. I mean, there was kids mm. all over the boundary, right? Mm. I mean, the, the, between the boundary open the fence was full of kids um, mm. watching cricket. And see that kids coming back for the 100 was, was an impressive part of it. So it is achieving something, and therefore I'm now more minded <laughs> to sort of give it my support. But it does make me think that we've got to get the blast marketing better well because families shouldn't be excluded i mean there was a bit of a thing at the ecb a couple of years ago they're saying you know the blast was all about beer and the hundred was all about kids i don't agree with that at mm -hmm. all i think there's a place for everything in this state mm -hmm. we've got a brilliant stadium that can cater for all different needs and i do think we should try and get those families who are coming to the hundred start coming to blast as well and start using our marketing efforts because we've got a good team here who know mm -hmm. how to do that kind of thing well, I think it's encouraging to hear you, you, you talk in, in this regard because um, I think it's imperative for, for Lancashire cricket, but cricket per se in the country, that we engender a family attitude to it. Yeah. Uh, and it's been proven that it can be done through the widening of the demographic yeah. and the appeal to the 100. Yeah. So let's, let's concentrate on doing it for, for T20. Yeah. What's then we'll your... get to the county championship. Well, I was just going to come... I mean, that, but that's got to have something behind it because I think yeah. for too long, and this isn't just a five-year problem, is it? This is no. going back for years and years Correct. and years now. The county championship's been allowed to become this development game, in effect, hasn't it, for mm. Test cricket? And I, but I, I think that's think... come from the ECB to a degree because I think they regard it purely as a nursery for yeah. for, for Test cricket, yeah. and they had a bit of a reputation or developed a reputation in recent years for just plucking players out of the county game, not having a regard for who, who was playing who and how no. important these games were. No. So the balance between East England yeah. and the counties yeah. uh, needs to, in my view, be redressed a little. Yeah. And it's interesting, but, but what, I mean, what I hate is coming here and seeing 1,000 people watching mm -hmm. a live game, and, I, and that doesn't feel right. But it does remind me, when I lived in America when I worked for Disney, I lived in Los Angeles, and the MLS, Major League Soccer, was founded whilst I was out there. And I used to go and watch the LA Galaxy, and they used to play in the Pasadena Rose Bowl, which is 100,000 capacity, and they'd have about 10,000 fans, and it felt awful. <laughs> and what they did was build you know, a 28,000 purpose-built stadium, which was called the Home Depot Center at the time. The, and then it was full. They got it full to 28,000. It's still full every game now. 
and I do have a, a hope that when the Farrington development, you know, we broke ground or we're breaking ground this today week, on that. Yeah, today, today yeah. I think that you yeah. know the guys are all up there announcing that today, that that we can build there something that creates a real atmosphere mm. for the for the games where we've got smaller attendances, but you know, maybe two thousand, two and a half thousand people can make it feel really special. I went to York last season for the um game between Yorkshire and Langston. The 50, 50 over game. Mm. And the atmosphere was brilliant, actually. Mm. You know, they, they had a, a venue there that mm. accommodated a couple of thousand people really well and felt very special. And I think if we can create that at Farrington and make it feel like a real cricket venue, for, and, you know, a home for members and fans and everything, then I think we can we can maybe start reinvigorating the county championship as well, potentially, and play some of our games there. Not all of our games, because I don't, I don't want members to think we're moving all our county championship games there, but I do think it's got a role to play in making the county championship feel special again. No, I, I totally agree, and I always think, and uh, there may be a his historic bent to this, but going and playing at Southport or Liverpool or Blackpool in in years gone by yeah. has always been an event for the players as well yeah. because there's an intimacy about the the venues yeah. and I think Farrington and I've been um, hopefully I've been uh, I can't say instrumental well, but you've been helped. a massive part yeah you I've have you've been an important in, part in uh, in getting this thing off the ground so I'm very keen that it works well not only for county cricket but for for the academies and, and the women. It's going to be yeah. a centre for women's and girls' yeah. cricket. Yeah. And that is a thing um, that has increased exponentially over the last five years. The yeah. interest in women's and yeah. girls' cricket yeah. has, has, has grown hugely yeah. and has been probably the one single factor that is promoting the game yeah. over and above everything else. Would you agree? Yeah, it's brilliant. It's, it's amazing. And, uh, you know, it's obviously the Lionesses on the football side have shown that you know when when something is done well it can 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 capture the imagination of the whole nation and i think the cricket team is now developing that capability and it's improving and improving and improving isn't it i think mm. i was on tour in dubai with the you know the two teams just the first time we took both teams took both teams was like 2 years mm. ago now and i was there and then i was there this year and actually the standard and the you know the the preparation the strength and conditioning all that stuff that goes into making great professional sports people has improved so much even in the space of 12 months and i think the women's game is going to just grow and grow exponentially and we're excited that in the future we've now got women's international cricket happening at old trafford and you know it's a real ambition of the board in general and mine to fill this stadium for women's international cricket i interviewed carol hodges earlier this week oh, right. who's a preeminent lancashire lady yeah, cricketer yeah. She never ever played on here you know no, I, know. I mean how sad is that yeah um, well, at least she's still, our women's team are she's still a, a fantastic fan of lancashire cricket yeah. both men and, and women yeah no she's amazing and she's you know it's great that we've got this connection with her now yeah, yeah. Um, which is fantastic but you know someone like kate cross what an ambassador for the game she is really? already, and she, you know, her role in the future is very clear that mm. she can help us learn how to grow and develop this game. We've got, you know, amazing people playing here. I just want the Thunder team to become more and more successful. You know, they're they're on a journey of becoming more successful. I'd like to step change that. One of the things that I found frustrating is that ECB have, to some extent, put the shackles on how much you can invest in women's cricket, and we want to break free of that and invest more, have more players on professional contracts. Why do you think they've done that? Is that to prevent a sort of hierarchy developing? I don't you think? know. Well, I, if it is, it's not going to work because there no. are, ourselves and Surrey are desperate to invest more. And, mm. you know, Hilton, as you know, have started investing in our women's cricket team. Mm. We would like to have more professional players on bigger contracts and actually start building the team and start building everything around the women's team. It's a bit, yeah, it's a big focus for us because I think it's, you know, yes, we've just my commercial hat on. I think there's a lot of commercial upside for us in that, but uh, but also it's just really exciting to see how the games develop so quickly and, and thinking about where it can get to over the next five years. You mentioned the word success. I think it's your mantra and your primary driver, isn't it? Because you. You were very firm on that when yeah. you took over as chairman. Yeah. And unfortunately, Lancashire haven't won any anything no. since you've no. you've been in, in in your position as chair. Um, and it's never easy in professional sport clicking your fingers and saying, "Yeah, we're going to win." But uh, your I get from your recent statements, there's a the, the, your article in in Spin, which I don't think's come quite come out yet. Yeah. But I've read it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
you accentuate the need for success. How are we going to achieve that? Yeah, and I, it's, it's interesting. I go back to it as well when you're director of cricket. It's not easy. I was very excited two years ago when we came second in everything. And, you, th- and, you know, we should have won the should T20 have. blast at yep. Edge Baston. That, that still, <laughs> still rankles still like and always will. to Keaton and Dane about how they got out on that day. <laughs> you know, the... Um, I want us to win trophies, and it's I, I. There's a subtle change that I think needs to happen here at the moment, which is I think we need to focus on on winning and bringing silverware back more than just developing players. And I think it's really hard to get that balance right. Mm. But I think we, you know, certainly for me, I think for our members, from when I read social media, we've got to bring more silverware here. We are one of the top three counties in the game, but from a, a Winning silverware, we are not, and and we've got to switch that around. Mm. You know, in my day job as as chief executive of the British Olympic Association, we are very focused on on delivering medals, and and the way we look after individual athletes who have got a chance of winning medals at Olympic Games gives them. You the set optimum. you set targets in the Olympics, don't you? Well, for... we don't actually. The UK sports set medal oh, targets. I? Big, big, I, I noted I think for the last Olympics there were there were targets set and very clear. Clearly, that was seen as a parameter of, of, of success, how many medals. It is a, it is a parameter. It's, it's probably the key parameter of success. You've got to win, but you've got to win properly. I mean, and, mm. you know, we have had issues in Olympic sports where mm. we have bullying, of of sexism, of, of you know, even worse. Yeah. And and we've got to get that right, but still winning medals is is a vital, a vital part of that. And we will put cotton wool around our gold medal, you know, hopefuls. So how do we do that? Let's, yeah, let's that's quickly transfer here, now, it back it? to Lanky. Yeah. You can't put cotton wool around your county cricketers. No, no, but they you need do a it squad. In England, you know, there are things, but we've, got to be, we've got to be smart and analyse what works, what doesn't work. Mm. We had too many draws last season, clearly. Mm. We've got an amazing test match wicket, but mm. we're not playing five-day cricket. Mm. So we've got to figure out how we build a team that can win at Emirates Old Trafford. Now, you know more about that. I'm not going to get into that. No, no. What I've got to do is support the your... people yeah. and the roles and make sure all that is being thought through. And if it means we've got to have a great spinner who can, who's better than you know anyone else in the county championship, then that should be our focus. I, I'm, not, I'm just using that as an example because I think we've got to find a way to turn those draws, which were winning draws in your club cricket on a Sunday <laughs> afternoon. We've got to find out a way of turning them into, into victories because then we've got a chance to win the county championship. Mm. And and then the blast, you know, we've again. It's a, it's getting the right mix of of overseas talent, of of let, picking the best players at the best time. It was really hard, I think, for Glenn last year with the with the England players coming back in, mm-hmm. and he and he feels the need to play them all mm. all the time, mm. and yet they weren't necessarily on form compared to no. some of the guys who'd seen us all the way to the final last year. And I do understand that challenge, but that's the kind of ruthless decisions that coaches have to make, and and. I just want to see us bring more silverware back. I mean, I remember the Gillette Cup days, and they, they were amazing. And then you had your one day. Well, we had a great time. Yeah, 90, we had a great time the in the back end yeah. of the 80s and 80s 90s. And 90s. So these things go, they're, cyc- they're cyclical, aren't they? I mean, sport, But I sport, thought this team two years ago, especially 39. in the Blast, was good enough to, to stop up bringing silverware back. Yeah. And then to not do quite as well this year. And actually, we were quite a way off in some of the games <laughs> in the Blast. <laughs> So it's just getting that right. We're on the search for a head coach, both for the men's and the women's teams at the moment. And I think finding someone who is, you know, has got winning at the top mm. of their list of priorities is important. There's a tinge of sadness saying goodbye to Glenn Chapel. Yeah, well, hopefully we don't say goodbye to him. And one, you know, I've, I've been in touch with him since he left. I think there's a massive sadness. He's been a absolute hero here. He'll, his name will live a lot longer than mine here, without a doubt. And he deserves all our, our thanks. But I think for Glenn and for Lancashire, there comes a time when you need to, to do your own thing. And I think Glenn you know, will go and find a great coaching job that will help his career move on, because he's very ambitious as well. Mm. Um, and then we've got a chance to just bring some new blood in. And you know, with Mark coming in after you as director of cricket, he kind of needs his own person as well that he can work with. And that's... That's key. I mean, in any job, the people who work for you are what make you look good or bad. And that relationship with your employees has got to be good. And I think that was always a hard one for Mark. Is, mm. is, you know, he worked for Glenn and then Glenn was working for him. I mean, that was always going to be difficult. But now Mark has got the chance and the opportunity to bring in someone who's very much going to be you know, working with him in the coaching role. Uh, and, and likewise on the women's team as well. So I'm really excited. I mean, some of the names of people we're talking to are exciting. Whether we end up getting them over the line or not, we'll, we wait and see. But 
the process is good. We've thrown the net wide. Mm -hmm. We have looked for people who, who put success at the top of the list of priorities, and let's see what comes back. You know, if you look at when we've won the silver in the last, what is it now, 12, 13 years here, the two coaches were very high-profile, successful coaches, actually, at that point of time. I'm not saying that's what we have to have, but we Peter have to have Moore's someone. Peter Moore's Ashley Giles. Ashley Giles and Peter Moore's. Mm. I don't know if that's coincidence. You, you know more about it than I do. Well, no. I, uh, obviously, they play a part, don't they? Yeah. They obviously do. Um, the county championship in 2011, I, I think, was was a phenomenal effort because uh, man for man, it probably wasn't the most talented side that we've ever had in the last God knows how many years, yeah. but they, they came together and won it. Um, and the T20, as you say, we should have won it last year, too, uh, yeah. 2022. Um, okay, so... That's good. That success is 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 there. It's paramount. It's what we're what we're striving for. Um, there's an interesting balance all the time between business and cricket. Yeah. And this is Lancashire cricket is very much a business now. There is no question. You look at yeah. this stadium; it's fantastic. Yeah, it is. It's one of the best in the world. Uh, so you must be delighted at the way this now looks. Yeah, uh, the completion of the of the new Hilton Hotel, uh, and the way that it blends together yeah. works really well. But the balance between business and cricket is still of paramount importance, and getting yeah. that balance right it's very important to the cricketing side, yeah. perhaps more so than the business side. If you yeah, and, and it has to be cricket first, right? I think hopefully that's clear, mm. but it has to be cricket. At the heart, we're a cricket club, but cricket alone well, can't survive without the other things going on around it. We're yeah. seeing that across the board. And and so we are lucky that we've got a space in this venue that we can actually use to create other business streams that help the whole thing sustain. But, you know, county championship cricket does not make any money no. for anyone. No. So And yet we have to fund it and we have to make it work. So then you have to find a model where that's the starting point. And And... They've done it really well. I mean, I don't take any responsibility for this, but other than you know making sure that Daniel was all over the hotel, been delivered on time and stuff. But they have done a brilliant job, and and the the catering facilities, the conferencing, the hotels, all that stuff is working um, incredibly well. And then that feeds, you know, the cricket side. And we didn't want to lose Test match cricket. I mean, there was a real risk back in in the you know, mid two thousands that we were going to lose count uh, Test match cricket. It's really important, I think, for the city, for the members, for all of us, that we have the best test matches being played here. I, so, I, so I do go around and think, we've got to keep this stadium as good as it can be. And so things like the concerts, the conference and the catering are, are great things. And you know, it happens that I also love music, so I'm very <laughs> happy with the bands we get here. But it works brilliantly. And, you know, the groundsman gets annoyed, obviously. But we, we try and make sure everything's looked after because the cricket does have to come first, but everything else has to feed that. Is there, is there any thought... At board level or from individuals of um, going into partnership with foreign interests, maybe an Indian Indian Premier League team, yeah. maybe I don't know, giving them a twenty five percent share of what we've got here. Well, the, there's no discussions like that. There, there is always talk about things because we get approached by you know people from the IPL on a regular basis. I would say mm. in my time here. The opportunity for that, I think the opportunity that everyone's discussing is around the 100. And if the counties potentially have more ownership of the franchises in the 100, which is a discussion that's going on, then potentially that gives us a vehicle for raising capital to put into the game. And and that, for me, but we have to consult our members on any of this. Right? We are yeah, a members' yeah, organisation. Yeah. Be... And so, so you can't just say, yeah, that's what we're doing. You can't unilaterally. I do that. think that the 100... And the success of it provides us an opportunity, A, for you know, refinancing everything that's gone on here because we've got £30 million pounds of debt now that mm. we've got to pay well, that, down. Well, that was my point behind that. Yeah, but all, the, the debt is sustainable. Clearly, Metro Bank wants to let us do that and no, they no. put parameters around how we repay that debt. It's sustainable. So we're not in any urgent need of capital or cash at this club. That's the We're one of the few, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, We have this discussion at the county chairs and CEOs meetings and I'd say the vast majority would like an injection of capital at, at some point in the near future. You know, Yorkshire clearly are, mm. are looking for that right now. Yeah. We don't need it. And I'm very clear in the discussions that 
you can't force this to happen because we actually have got a sustainable business model and that's what's been great about the club. We, you know we've got an amazing board of mm. people with different backgrounds yeah, yeah. And, and together we come up with sensible solutions and this debt is sustainable. We, do, we want to pay it down and I keep telling our friends at Metro that I, I want to pay it down quicker than they want me to pay it down but they, we will do that. But uh, there will be a point when we might need to make other investments. You know, if you are going to make the 100 the second best tournament after the IPL, you probably need to improve the, improve the amount of money going into player wages to get the better players mm. coming in. And, and that's right now, we've got salary caps or salary limits that mean, I think the South African um, League is paying more, the Middle Eastern League is certainly going to pay more, I wouldn't be surprised if the US League pays more, and it will drop down the pecking order, and, and we can't let that happen actually from a value perspective. I won't say you've hinted, but there are reading between the lines, and not this is this is not purely coming from you yeah. or me for that matter. Yeah. But if the hundred was to go to a twenty over format, would that make it easier? I think it would make absolute sense. I don't. I I think I, they did it to differentiate it from the blast. That's why they did yeah, it. We, I think we're past that now. You won't even need to change the branding of it. It could still be called the hundred. It'd be some, in the future. It'd be some quirky quiz question. Yeah. But the. I think it should be a T20 Tom, just to fall in line with this, you know, this game that is brilliant. I mean, it is the best format of cricket from a global audience perspective. It's exciting mm. um, and it does generate huge amounts of interest around the world. And the fact that it's going to be in the Olympic Games has been fascinating for me. So I would just fall in line with it. I think, it, I, I think and, and I do feel in the meetings that I'm in, that there is a sympathy for that attitude and for that change to happen. But let's see. I don't want to preempt everything. I'll probably get tons of um, social media feedback saying, "Don't touch it." No. Well, that's I don't the know. Thing, I, you know, I, think, a... I think you'll get just as much saying, "Yes, please yes, do." Yes, please do. I know. <clears> and <throat> every conversation I have is "Yes, please." But mm. I'm 59 years old, and my cohort, you know, I don't know what my kids think. They, they, well, the well, first thing is to get them into watching it, right? That's, yeah. that's the main thing yeah. is to get them to come along and love cricket. Yeah. That's the main thing we've but, all got to try but you, to do. You've just mentioned the Olympics, and you're obviously CEO of British Olympics, which yeah. is a huge, huge uh, task in itself. And you've got the Olympics coming up next year in Paris. Yeah. Um, but you, we've also got cricket on the horizon, the 2028 Olympics. Yeah. Now, that must that is a huge um, huge impetus for the game massive isn't it? yeah Unbelievable. massive and i think you know the us market is always the kind of golden goose well, you for always any said sport. that to me yeah and i did i said to you from day one if from i was to put one, my money said, anywhere you did i wouldn't put it into india india or middle east i'd go no. to america because there is over 10 million south asians who play you know who are into cricket already mm. in 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 the usa and yeah, I just think it's a huge untapped market, and they're building the stadiums now. You know, the, the Night Riders are building a stadium in Irving, Los Angeles. You know, down south near Orange County, they're building a purpose-built cricket stadium, and they're going in around the country. And so I still think that that's a fascinating game. But the trouble is the IPL owners have got their first, right? They're already in there. Five of them own mm. different franchise in America. But the Olympics is going to be fun. So I think the current discussion is that there will be six teams. Um, in each of the men's and women's format, and it'll be the top six from the world rankings. The unknown, though, is do America get him? Because usually in team sports in Olympic mm. Games, the host country gets an automatic place. Mm. You may remember during London 2012, we had a basketball team, a yeah. handball team, a yeah. volleyball team. Yeah. You know, we've never qualified in those sports no. again. We never will for a long, well, basketball we might do, but not in, in the other ones for a long time. So they've got to figure out what they do with the USA. There, there's mm. also, what. There's discussions going on. I thought it was a shoe in to go into the Knight Riders Stadium down in LA, but there's talk about actually hosting it in another city where there's a bigger population of of cricket. It's like New York, it's like New York or mm. Chicago or somewhere mm. where there's you know a bigger population. So that's not decided yet. But I think it'll be massive. I think the tournament will be huge in the Olympic Games. I think mm. they're going to try and squeeze it into a week for the men and a week for the women. So it'll be fast. I think, and I think it'll get a huge audience. I mean, oh, the economics of it for the IOC were a no-brainer. You know, they don't get very much money out of India. Um, you know, one of the interesting Olympic facts is that Laura and Jason Kenny, who live in this part of the world, yeah. um, have won more gold medals than India in the whole history of the Olympics. So, yeah. you know, there's more in Knutsford um, <laughs> near here. There's more gold medals than there are in India. And they don't pay very much Olympic rights. It's going to increase by 15 times how much they will pay for the TV rights in India 
when the cricket's in the Olympic Games, you know, and, and it is a world where money talks, mm. undoubtedly. Mm. But I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm genuinely excited about it. And Good stuff. So 2024, just coming back from 2028, yeah. 2024, yeah. Olympics year yeah. for you, huge year. Yeah. Uh, so success for, for Britain in the Olympics and a Lancashire trophy. That yes. would just be about right, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we've got to at least one Lancashire trophy. <laughs> yeah, we've got to do it. I mean, yeah. but you know, I'll be spending the first part of my summer getting ready for the Olympic Games in France. Yeah. So you know, unfortunately, I won't be able to be around here as much. But after that, then I'll be able to spend a lot more time. But we've got, we've obviously as well got the Test match with Sri Lanka, and we've got the you know the Australia game as well. So there's some exciting cricket. But yeah, I, for me, it's all about in the county championship setting off well and getting off to a good start to make sure we've got a good team and then doing really well in the blast and let's see you know hopefully we'll have a head coach in place long before that who's building a culture mm. and a, a you know a team that that can take us to success that's what we want great stuff Andy we could talk for hours yeah. it's been fascinating chatting to you for the last uh, half hour so thank you very much for coming in no, on pleasure. a very busy schedule and thank you very much cheers thank you <laughs>